Um, were you part of the debates about whether to go on hunger strike? Did you take part in those discussions? And was there much disagreement on the law? I mean, hunger strike had always been talked about because um, political status had first been granted in 1972 as a result of hunger strike. It was in a period of a result of negotiations with the British anyway. Um, but if you look at Irish history from Terence McSweeney and Thomas Ashe, every minute, minutes, hunger strike is obviously a weapon of, of prisoners, not, not just Irish Republicans. but um, So it's always talked about, but I think because there was a, an understanding at that time that this is... A, this is not 72, this is a bigger policy here, um, that it's not going to be successful. But I think once everything else had been exhausted, uh, I mean, there's people on the blanket, probably, I mean, there's people left for a whole heap of reasons. There's people who mentally just broke down and left. Um, so it wasn't a situation where you could just continue on indefinitely in this level of protest and brutality. Um, so I think generally most people were in favour of of having a hunger strike, and it was always been held back from until a point came where um, I think we recognised and outside recognised that there was nothing more significant going to happen that hadn't already happened. And um, that would have been Brendan Cuse at that time, he was the OC, deciding it would be a hunger strike. And then asking for volunteers, um, I put my name forward for it. And I did because I, well, I believed in. I believed in the struggle, I believed in the protests. Our view was that um, if they criminalise us, then they criminalise all Republican struggle, they criminalise Irish history, they criminalise, I mean, it's, where does where that end? Um, and, and so that was you know, why, why, why we had to take that stand. Um, I was at that stage, 20, 24, um, was married. Um, so to me, it was just, it's, yeah, it was just it was totally a rational decision to put it forward. Uh, it wasn't one of the ones that was picked. There was seven on it originally. At the very latter stage, there was 30 went on it, and I was one of them. And for three days, it was more of a media type 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 thing to on it. Um, that hunger strike ended after 53 days. Um, Bobby Sands, in the meantime, had taken over as as the as the OC um, of the Republican prisoners, so he would have been back and forward to the hospital with the, the hunger strikers. And, uh, and there was a full document <laughs> provided and all the rest of it, but the hunger strike was off. The Brits hadn't agreed to anything, and I think Bobby knew that night that you know, we'll, be on, we'll be on hunger strike again. He tried his best in between to see if there was any sort of room for manoeuvre or whatever else, but, um, but there wasn't. And, um, and that was probably, for me, like the worst period. Uh, from the end of the, the, the hunger strike, first hunger strike ended on the 18th of December, so we just run into Christmas. Christmas coming, people aren't thinking hunger strikes or that news, whatever. Um, but that uncertainty of what's happening, and remember, like, the hunger strike was meant to give us the answer, it was meant to provide. You know, we've been on this now for four years, and, and it's over, and we're exactly where we were on the 27th of October when it started. And, uh, and the, the, the prison administration allowed the OCs from each block to go and meet and meet with Bobby and, and, and all the rest, and then that started to stop as well. Um, and then it was fairly early in, in the new year when uh, Bobby sent around word that there was going to be a hunger strike. He'd already said that he would be the first one on it, and that uh, Francis Hughes would be the second one. And uh, Remy McCreese and Patsy Harlow were the next ones, and there only would be four, and looking for volunteers. And it was going to be different this time because we'd learnt from the first one that seven people gone at one time, then seven people got critical at one time, so the Brits just have to ride out maybe a week or two weeks, and that's, that's seven people dead. So it would be Bobby and, um, and then this gap of two weeks. And the other thing being that if there was any room for negotiations, then there would be a period where there's not a critical point. And I put forward uh, when they began, it was the exact same few as that I had a few months, months earlier. Um, the decision to pick people at that stage would have been Bobby. He was deciding that he was going on it, and it would be followed by those other ones. And then he stood down as the OC in Brenda McFarland, or Bick McFarland as he's usually called. <coughs> was made the OC in later times, it would have been Bick who decided who was, who was going on it. Um, initially, it was thought there would only be four, and like, as in, if the four die, that's it. But we really kicked up and said, like, there's no way, like, I mean, if somebody, if Bobby dies, nobody takes his place, and the Brits are going to think, well, the really, I mean, this is all the have is for. So, uh, so it's all that, sort of, it's, it's a bit bizarre, and you're just talking about, you know, who will replace 
whatever, but that would have been uh, down the pick. Um, I mean, there's over 100 people who had volunteered for the hunger strike. They still had their names on the list when the hunger strike ended. Um, what normally was the case was when someone died, like Bobby died, he was replaced by Joe McDonald, who was actually a friend of his. They were both arrested on the same operation. Um, but there came a stage in June where they decided just to increase the numbers of people actually on the hunger strike at one time. So each Monday someone would join it and um, I was the last of that and I think it was four and I joined it on the 29th of June. And before I joined it, Beck would have said to me a few weeks earlier, I was in the same, same block myself, um, look, uh, your name's going, I'm, I'm picking you, basically. Um, and they told me the other ones who were, who were going on it. And it was re rethink, you know, your, your thing, your, uh, your view, because, you know, it's now definite as opposed to, you know, everybody just throwing their, their name in. And then I got a communication from the Army Council, which is just like one cigarette paper, um, very concise. It just says, Comrade, you've um, put your name forward for the hunger strike. Do you realise this means that you will most likely be dead in another seven, eight weeks, rethink your decision, Army Council. So I think if you hadn't thought about it seriously before that, that was a, would have been a pull-up sort of uh, uh, thing to you. Um, I, didn't, I mean, I did think again, but I mean, how do you think, how do you, how do you know, like, how would you be whenever it comes to the point you're going to die? You, you can't, all you can think of is what's been previous experience or how have you dealt with um, things up until then or whatever else, but that's how people would have been chosen. Basically, they would also try to get a geographical spread and it would be the length of time you're in jail and the length of time you're st still going to do. Obviously, somebody who just come into jail wasn't going to be put on a hunger strike and it's the thing, I've often said, like, the hunger strike could never have happened 10 people down without that five years of, of priority. Like, you couldn't have just walked into jail and then decided, oh, well, 10 to just day because it was that bond of solidarity that was built up over the years. It was that sort of knowledge that we need to resolve this. Um, it was about how are we going to live the next, I was doing life, probably half the population was doing life for 25 years. So it was, it was a very practical element to it. Um, but then, yeah, a very clinical thing about how do you decide who's going here or wherever. Did, did you think at any stage, well, maybe somebody else can do this? It doesn't necessarily have to be me. I mean, why? what makes you think, well, I should be one of the, the people? Uh, well, well, no, I wouldn't have thought it should be someone else. Um, I, would, uh, I would have thought very much that, um, that I want to be involved. I think you're not going to attract your attention or anything. <laughs> um, no, it's... Um, I think once you've decided that you're putting your name forward, you can be on it. You, it's not, you almost then believe that you should be on it, but um, but you believe in this here's happening. So if it's happening, you want to be involved in it, and involved in it means writing out and smuggling it, which is the other thing. All the communications that would have gone out on a daily basis. I mean, there's a river of communication now and again. The prison administration would capture some of the the comms. What we did was write things on toilet paper uh, or cigarette papers, and they'd be wrapped up in a small note and put in their mouth. Or but there's all elaborate <laughs> ways of, of, of taking things out. Um, I'm not going to them now. <laughs> uh, and thanks to it was the women who came up with the, on the fizzes because then you could kiss and get a communication out. Um, and fair play them because there's a number of and there would have been. You would have said young girls, and because there were girls, who were 18, 19, whatever, uh, who then the prison authorities very quickly caught on, you know, the way they come up to the jail, morning and afternoon, every day, and seeing different men. <laughs> 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 who, uh, who, who then, who then got pulled in and stripped, searched, and taken to the RUC <coughs> boxes, and stripped and searched, and everything else. So, but again, that community, I mean, Bobby Sands could have written a column to the Army Council in the morning, and get an answer back in the evening. That's how, how quick it was. Like, and the jail would catch a couple of them. And maybe they thought they were being then successful, but I mean, there was a river of, of, of communication flowed in and out of the I mean, we were getting, we probably knew more what was happening outside than what people outside because people were coming back from visits and, and, and such things. So, but no, the thing about being, no, it, it, it wouldn't have been part of the thing to think somebody else could, should do it. I think the whole opposite would have been the view in terms of the whole protest. Yeah. 